All right, welcome everyone to this episode of Around the Mic on Sojo 1049. Some bonus content for our loyal fans out there. Uh, we hope you like it. We hope you'll subscribe. I'm Heather DeLuca. This is Social Spring of the Mike Show. Mike is here with us as well, Mike Hi. Richmond. And we're joined today by a very, very special guest, an incredibly talented singer-songwriter who played our first ever Little Pink Dress Party um, many, how many years ago was that? I guess four or five years ago now. Uh, uh, she's Katrina Wolverton. Yay. Welcome, Katrina, to the Sojo 105 podcast. So nice to be back. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Katrina's got some new music. Um, Hold Me Down is the new single, Love. Thank you. Um, we're going to play that for you in just a little bit. And she's handed us these fun little KW trucker hats that I cannot. Well, Spring, it's not going to fit over your man my bun. My hair is in like a little donut <laughs> on top of my head. It's not a man bun. It is a regular bun. Don't even start, Mike, over there. <laughs> Gotta let those curls go. No, the problem is it's third day hair after the gym, so it's not even curls anymore. It's if I take this off, it's just gonna stay in one place. Yeah, and you, this is you why don't want to see I've that. been there. <laughs> That's why I love spring, because she'll totally admit she hasn't washed her hair in three days. Oh, like yeah. I love it. I can't I can't deny it. Your like, curls look good. Still, third day hair. But it looks I wish my third day like my third day curls look like that. But if I hit the gym hard like you did, uh -huh. then the third day hair would not be so yeah. No matter what I do, the curls just end up all frizzy and ugly, and I'm like, oh, I've tried. Sorry, everyone. It's a curly girl thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have curly hair. I can't get it curly anymore. Mike has no you. hair, so we'll call him curly. I just have, like the Three Stooges. I have uh, three days stubble going on. Can we start calling you curly? No. We can't. Um, we can call him that. I Why tried. Not? I tried. <laughs> Spring and I feel like I feel like backup singers right now because <laughs> we're sharing the same microphone, and we're like, ooh. To be clear, I'm not the Michelle here. I'm Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Clearing that up before you take dibs. <laughs> um, all right. All right. Katrina's Beyonce, but I'm not going to be Michelle. <laughs> did you just call me Queen Bee? We I just did. did. I did. I'll just call you. I always Queen. feel bad. I'll take it. I always feel bad for the singers when they have to share a microphone. Why? Because what happens if like one of them has bad breath and you're sharing oh. it? I totally have coffee breath right now. I know. Let me smell. You're right. Up Let in me there. smell. Like, like if Katrina and I had to share a microphone right now, I apologize if because it would just be brutal. I took a mint, but I think it's a combination of mint and coffee. Oh. Oh. No. No, no, no. Sorry. No, no. Um, okay, so there is a there's a trend around social media right now where people are are talking about their listing. Uh, concerts that they've been to and one is a lie have you seen this circulating facebook i i did see it i haven't done it so i guess my question is to all of you what is the one concert you've been to that you're almost afraid to admit that you did what's the one concert you've been to that if somebody asked you you would lie about it because we're embarrassed yes secretly love it concert. but that you're embarrassed are you asking me? Yeah, Katrina, you start. Okay, so it's I was embarrassed, but I grew out of being embarrassed, and now it's a it's a badge of honor. New kids on the block, baby. I, it, you know, at one point in time, <laughs> after their popularity in the late '80s, when they kind of went to the NKOTB and they tried to be the, like these hard rap guys, it was like if you still like them, you really had to kind of hide it. It was like a dark underground fan club Except and now it's become nostalgic and cool again but i agree there was a time you would have gotten made fun of for that totally but the thing is everyone loved them and when you listen to their songs i feel like y you realize how great their songs actually were and their vocals were amazing just the, saying the songs were good and and for a time it was really really fun and you could see the appeal my mom took me to that concert your mom's great. She was That's so a great. good mom. Like all these 12 year old screaming girls. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Mike? Uh, the concert that I would be embarrassed to admit that I went to, I would have to say, and it's, it's right around the same genre and the same time period as Katrina's. Debbie Gibson, Electric Booth <laughs> Tour. Oh. Me too! I was there too! <laughs> I bought Yay. the I bought a T-shirt. Yeah. Yep. Thin, you had the T-shirt. Thin white T-shirt, size small. 
which actually... Why did you get a size small? Well... He wanted it to fit like a baby tee. Years later, uh, when I was in college, I wore that Debbie Gibson t-shirt to a couple of bars, and I went to the school at University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia. Athens, Georgia, alternative music scenes, one of the, one of the birth towns of al alternative music. So I would go into some of these underground bars wearing this tight white Debbie Gibson t-shirt. Wouldn't have to pay for a drink all night. People say, man... You got brass ones wearing that, and you're like, I'm going to buy you a beer. That worked. Something else. All right, so for me, I have enjoyed every single concert I've been to. But this one, my cousin actually dragged me to, and it's a pop punk band. She's really into Man Overboard. And there was this one person that I wanted to go see because I was such a fan in high school, and he's the lead singer from Escape the Fate. But Escape the Fate is no longer a band, so he started a new band. We were the oldest people there, which says a lot because I'm only 23. <laughs> so everyone else in the crowd was like 14, 15, 16. And here I am with my cousin, 21, 22, rocking out to escape the fates lead singer. All the uh, kids there think you're cops. Right. And I'm just like, why am I here? How did I end up here? And we did not even look Undercover like we belonged cops. there whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, it was a great concert, though. Was oh, everyone man. staring at you? Like, what are they doing here? I tried to blend in and act like I was 15, but that didn't really work out because I had a beer in my hand. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so I was like, mm, no, I totally used a fake ID for this. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. So, Heather, what, what concert are you embarrassed? Uh, too many to name. I think the fact that I've <laughs> gone by myself to see the Spice Girls and Peter Cetera alone. Oh like, I've God. gone to these concerts alone. But I also saw Sheena Easton perform underneath a roller coaster at Hershey Park, and that's kind of bizarre but i've also seen o-town multiple times was the roller coaster going while she yes. Houston was singing yes and so she's like belting out moonraker or whatever no for your eyes only yes. and all of a sudden you hear a car full of screaming yeah, people go by yeah oh it was gosh. the weirdest thing ever i feel sorry for and, Sheena Houston. and this was only like eight years ago so it wasn't even in her like heyday and you have all these like middle-aged fans rushing the stage with their like 1980s vinyl records and like it goes as she's singing you know strut now put it out what Woo! <laughs> that sounds like a by. fun time <laughs> but in all fairness she's awesome and so is hershey park i know okay hershey yeah park is awesome but i think i that's one i'm like a little ashamed and i'm a little ashamed sometimes to say i go to concerts alone like nobody wanted to see peter cetera with me so i hey, went man. by myself you gotta no go i've gone that. before when by myself music lover you go right my friend it was 25 went to a one direction concert by herself enjoyed it she had the time of her life I, she said i would do it again when i went to see the spice girls reunion i was jamming every word to every song getting it on yeah, it's fun you're, not, by you're not alone you're there with everybody else that too. Yeah. when you go to a concert do you buy a t-shirt or something um some I type buy of program swag? now um program i buy a program <laughs> because the t-shirts i'm i'm really never gonna wear all of the t-shirts and they take up a lot of space in the drawer i think um some i'll take a stack of my concert programs and i'll interchange them like instead of having coffee table book we have like a stack of concert programs so people can when they sit down they just like flip through like i don't know eric clapton from like the journeyman tour or you know i have an old paul mccartney um wings uh a concert program that my my parents passed down to me so oh so you're the person who buys the programs that. that's mighty clever yeah. yeah i like that they are so expensive now though it's like when I go to a concert, I have to choose between, oh, do I want this beer or do I want a concert program? Because pretty Always much go for the beer. Always go for the Always beer. So do you guys kind of feel like maybe you would go for the vinyl if they had vinyl? Um, maybe. So my husband's gotten into, he's like regressing. He's not moving with the times. He's regressing. He's now rebuying all the vinyl we sold and gave away at yard sales because uh. he's gotten back into it. And the only two that I've purchased that are like current releases were Adele's. Two albums. Um, Love her. 19, I get 21 and 25? 1925, I don't know, whichever the, the two most recent ones were. Because they're recorded so organically that they sound great on vinyl. But I don't want to hear something super polished like Jason Derulo on no. vinyl. It's like there's a time and a place for it. So, But vinyls are making a comeback. They so are. technically he is in style. Because yeah. I just got a vinyl for Hot Fuss. 
which is my favorite. It's from my favorite band, The Killers, and I got really excited. But I don't have a record player, so we'll figure that out yeah. eventually. I think any <laughs> rock bands, yeah, but like in this day and age, I don't know. I just think things are so synth. It would seem strange to me listening to like Katy Perry's California Girls on Agreed. vinyl. It just doesn't fit. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, and he's also taking up closet space in my house, which I like desperately need for my shoes and handbags. So priorities. Yeah. When but. you go to a show and say you own a T-shirt of that particular artist, do you wear that artist's T-shirt or that band's T-shirt to that show? That's a question for Katrina. I, I think. think that's a good debate, isn't it? It drives me nuts when I'm going to you know a show and I see that someone is wearing that shirt for that artist. And but what if they just bought it and put it on? Like, when you buy the shirt, do you put it on at the show? I, I'll give you that, but there's a lot of times you can tell it's an old shirt because right. they oh, love yeah, the band. Yeah, of course. And it's like, I know you love this band. You're obviously here at the show. <laughs> Why are you overkilling so it with the shirt? let's say somebody goes to see Metallica, who's been around for a really long time. If they are wearing a vintage Metallica t-shirt that they had from, like, the first time they ever saw them, no bueno? Why would you wear that to a Metallica show? Because you're showing the love. You're like, I've been around for a long time. I love this music. But you're like, yo, at man, the show. I've loved you since the beginning, man. You're my favorite band, man. Yeah. You can okay. See, I would show up at the Metallica show with my Debbie Gibson t shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> that would go over well. You're A double S. I would not. No, no, no. Because I have a few concert shirts, but I have not worn it ever to the concert I'm going to see. Yeah. I don't I, know why. I, I don't have a I reason. Do I just it. don't. Yeah. I have a question for you guys, though. Mm -hmm. Would you rather see someone wearing the concert tee for the band or artist they're going to hear or would you rather they be dressed up as the artist because i've been seeing that a lot oh my gosh it right? depends it depends did you see a lot of that at like the beyonce concert? at the beyonce concert every person brought it that i looked so simple i was like i did not get the memo to dress up like beyonce it's yeah. huge at lady gaga concerts. oh my huge. god britney you go to vegas and oh. britney's performing and there's oh, yeah. like a thousand britney's yeah. walking around at, at, the, uh, awesome. at the vegas britney residency yeah i've never seen it at an actual britney concert but at the residency yeah they, they were everyone was dressed like a schoolgirl. so i saw a culture club over the summer the hollywood bowl and it was so amazing mm -hmm. it was one of the best concerts i've ever been to and i'm so happy we went but i saw so many boy georges i want to be boy george there were boy georges everywhere That's and cool. one of them went to the aisle and was totally rocking out and everyone was so into it we, it was great i thought it was fun oh my god i love it mike doesn't know what to say what right do you that? think uh, sure. I'll give I'll give people that. It's like the people who dress up when they go to the movies, like for Star oh, Wars. That bothers me. Like, you... Oh, that that uh, no no no. You're That's sitting a in a no. dark theater for two hours. Right. Like, stop it. I was That's... like, how can you enjoy a Star Wars movie when you're wearing a Darth Vader helmet? Right. Step too far. Like, what if if they put Gone with the Wind back back for it's like you know they're gonna put it back on the movie in the movie theater? Am I supposed to go dress in like drapes for my house? Yeah, no. I think so. <laughs> no. Only if you can make it look like a gown, sweetheart. And oh, don't sit in front of me know. if you're going, because I'm not gonna be able to see. <laughs> With a big yeah, old hat. Yeah, sits in front of you at Star Wars and like they've got a giant Darth Vader hat or um, <laughs> just when they're breathing. or something. When they're breathing, you can hear them the whole time with the mask on. What does chewing popcorn sound like under the mask? <laughs> 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 I think it would sound like my dog Trigger well, eating a cookie. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a no. That's a no. Yeah, yeah, the whole dressing up thing. That's 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 dedication. I'll give you that. I've never done that, but I've only been tempted once, and that's when I went to see Cher. Uh, I thought, what if I did a throwback and I no. put on one of the Bob Mackie things? Oh and, yeah, but I didn't. Die. That would have been die. allowed. I love Cher. I love Cher. Yeah. Love Cher. Yeah. That would I be haven't my met person. anyone else that loves Cher like, a lot. Love Cher. So it's kind of making me excited. Would you go? Is it okay S to do it now at Madonna concerts? she's been uh, around yeah. for a long time yeah okay yeah get sure why not i think you could see a couple like a virgins running around sure but the, yeah but the, i was at nine years old when you have like oh multi-decade artists I mean, like shared you dress up yeah, like I mean, 60 yeah. shares 80s share with the closer. thing that's the a G beauty string. you have so many choices yeah same with madonna you could go 80s 90s madonna then now madonna speaking of madonna i did want to address that there is a movie company that wants to make uh, a film about Madonna's early life, um, paying her dues in New York City and, and getting signed to her first record deal and, and what that scene was like. 
Um, so yesterday on the Sojo Facebook fan page, I posted, who do you think should play Madonna in a movie about her life? And we got everyone from Chloe Grace Moretz to Miley Cyrus to Paris Jackson, oh the people as old as uh, Marissa Tomei and Cameron Diaz. So um, who is there? Is there a musician, artist, either living or dead, that hasn't had a film made about their life that should? Hmm. I was wondering if they did one about Cher. I was, yeah, I don't think they have. Back to Cher. <laughs> um, I was thinking like David Bowie. Have yeah. they ever made a movie about his no, life? Not that I know of. Who would play him? Um, hmm. Who would play David Bowie? Somebody from One Direction. Oh, I was thinking somebody from One Direction. Is that too no. bad? Like, no. No. She's like, no. 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 <laughs> it's like you're a member of his estate or something. <laughs> No, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Lady Gaga can play him. Lady Gaga would actually be a great option. I, I was, can see that. I was thinking she'd make a great Madonna. Oh, somebody, somebody yeah, mentioned she's playing. Her yeah. as well. uh, isn't she playing Versace? Donatella? No, she dropped out of it so she could do this. Star is Born with Brad Cooper. Oh, because she was a great so fit for good. that. I think hmm. Paris Jackson would be good to play Madonna. I could see that. A is, young Madonna, but do I don't know. If she's a good actress. You, would you be interested? In a movie about Lady Gaga's life. Yes. Not yet. Not yet. Really? No. Why? I mean, I love Lady Gaga, and we've had her on the show before, but uh, not yet. You know. Hmm. Still too early? Yeah. Is there anyone else, do you think, that deserves to have, like, a feature film made about their life? Barbara Streisand. I love Babs. I saw her in concert. I've never seen her. I want to someday. Hopefully, I'll get the chance. I actually saw her at the Friends and Family, which was the rehearsal the night before, mm -hmm. and Staples Center was not even half full, and it was so amazing. And I was in tears because I felt like my musical education was flashing before my eyes. Yeah. It was remarkable. Aww. But I don't think they have done a movie about her, have they? No, I'm pretty sure they don't. Who would play her? Lady Gaga. Um, I was going to say! <laughs> <laughs> Leah Michelle. Ooh, oh, good one. Good option. Jennifer Aniston. Oh. In later years. She looks like her in later years. No. Kevin O'Quan made her up for a photo shoot to look like Barbara Streisand later for one of the um, issues of People's Most Beautiful People. Can she sing? Hmm. Or would we do like the old Hollywood thing where someone else sings and then she does the acting and then... Yeah, do, that, they, yeah. do they still do that? They don't do that anymore, right? I they don't know. Dub voices. They do if they hire actors who can't sing. Yeah. Really? I assume now that they only hire actresses and actors that can sing. Nah. I think they do the best that they can, but... Like Anne Hathaway. Well, she can sing. I thought she sang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she can do something. Yeah. She's cute. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> Since you bring up celebrities, I had a question we've been kicking around uh, for the last few days. Um, and it started with Chris Pratt, the actor. Oh. <laughs> It's the reaction I get every time I start just talking about oh. this all week. When it comes to celebrities, and th like Chris Pratt says, he doesn't want to have, he doesn't like it when his fans want to take a picture with him. When somebody stops him on the street and says, hey, can I grab a photo with you? He would rather they just reach out, say hello, shake his hand, enjoy the experience instead of just getting a photo with him that they want to brag about. Uh, on social media, brag to their friends about. Yeah, these celebrities who don't like it when their fans meet them and want to take a picture. What are your thoughts on that? I'm always happy to take a picture. I understand how, you know, some people are way famous and every five seconds they would be stopped. They wouldn't be able to make their way through life and maybe they like that personal engagement. But I feel like if someone wants that, it's such an honor that someone gives a care enough that they See, love your work enough that they want a picture with you. But Drew Doughty is one of my favorite hockey players, and I've met him a bunch of times, and I've never asked for a picture, even though I have his Olympic jersey and all that stuff. But I decided that the next time I see him, I will ask for a picture because I did just want to chat him up and kind of see what he's like right. and is he cool, which he is. But So I get both sides of it. So, I don't know. I mean, yes, I guess, like, somebody like Chris Pratt is, like, Guardians of the Galaxy, Jurassic World. Like, he's, he, you're right. He probably can't walk down the street without everybody just, like, clam, glomming onto him. Mm -hmm. um, well. But, and, and I do get the perspective that he just doesn't want people to rush up to him, take a selfie. Like, if they're just noticing him because he's famous, maybe he just wants 
to be recognized by the people that actually appreciate his movies or his acting. Maybe he thinks that their motive. Oh, please. <laughs> if I walk up to Chris Pratt, you, you, do you think Chris Pratt really wants to get to know me? Yes. No. He Maybe. Doesn't care. He looks like a genuinely nice guy. I know. But, you wouldn't want to go have a beer with him? But you look, to be honest, if I fell over Chris Pratt on the street. Uh, you wouldn't know him? Probably would not know him. And he would definitely not know me. Nor should he. But when you look at people like Tom Cruise, look at the world famous actor Tom Cruise, who will spend hours signing autographs, taking pictures. He's leaving voicemail messages for people. If somebody like Tom Cruise and just forget the whole Scientology stuff, they're gonna throw him in the hole if he does, isn't nice to everybody. That's why. Maybe he's yeah, that's, the, that's the one thing I thought. Maybe about. he's recruiting. I don't know. But he's, maybe he's recruiting. He's spending time with his fans. He's, he doesn't want to have to get audited for being mean to people. But Chris Pratt did not say he's not spending time. He said he's not taking pictures. Don't want to take a picture. It takes two seconds. Just It's not like he's ignoring them. He's saying that he would just prefer that they would not take a picture because he says that right after he tells them no, they take it anyway. Yeah. So, so it's kind of disrespectful also. Yeah, I get that. Like, they're still a person. This is not a machine. This is a human being. I think it's the flip side of the mentality of, okay, so I met Paul Anka, who's obviously <gasps> an icon, Stop. and I wanted a picture so bad, but everyone kept coming up to him for pictures, and he was super gracious about mm -hmm. it, but I thought, I get five minutes with Paul Anka. What do I want? A picture or a conversation? Right, Even right. if he won't remember it. So maybe it's the flip, it's the flip yeah. side of that, but I feel like when you're the person in the spotlight you should be like hey unless you literally threw on like mismatching stuff to go walk your dog <laughs> and <laughs> he's in like the one percent of hollywood and that doesn't last forever no like there will come a time where he's not box office gold anymore where people and he's just gonna don't give wish a care. people right so See, that was don't my be take famous on it. then. I don't know. You know, if they're your fans, they love you, and they're going to put your picture <laughs> on Instagram, and they're going to promote you, and all for two, three, four, five seconds while he's trying to argue, I just want to shake your hand. I just want to get to know you as a person. <laughs> yeah, maybe by the time he's done having that conversation with them, they could have taken the picture yeah. and gone on, gone on their Look, business. I'm not going to lie. I know myself. I'm a very private person, and when I'm not in the mood, I'm not in the mood. So at least he at least told people, look, just a handshake is fine. When I ask you not to take a picture, please don't take the picture. I'm pretty sure there will be occasions where he's out. And he's like, sure, whatever. Come take a photo with me. But when someone asks you not to take a photo, just have that respect. That's the least you can do if you are a genuine fan. And like I said, I would never bother somebody that was sitting down to dinner. Right. No. If they were genuinely with their kids. Yes. I'm not going to scare the kids by, like, rushing up and approaching somebody. But if you're but, in a park, you know, and... Yeah, like, there's going to be moments where maybe he'll say, sure, let's take a picture. And then there's going to be moments where he says, no, is that bad? Well, didn't T-Swift say, I, I don't know if it was in an article or if I heard it in an interview, but she said something like, that's kind of part of your job. So if yeah. you're not in the mood... Don't go out. Just hang True. in. Right. I thought that was just really, just a really smart thing for her to recognize being, especially since she was famous at such a young age mm -hmm. and she's massive. Everyone knows who she is. And by all accounts, everything I've heard, she's super gracious as well. But now so. what about Emma Watson? Because Emma Watson does the same thing. She doesn't take photos with her fans either. She doesn't? Oh, well, no. Excuse me, Emma would, Watson. Well, her reasoning is that she would much rather meet them and speak with them. No, they don't want to meet and me. And also, she doesn't <laughs> want them. She doesn't. She doesn't want them taking photos of her either because then, let's say someone's stalking her, someone's following her, and they now know exactly where she's at. Oh, no. So I think for she just reasons. doesn't want to be to have a photo taken of her because she doesn't have a good side. Maybe. Ooh. She also wants a brown. Rare. So I could imagine that after that, <laughs> she just kind of wants to just live normally and not be t like have a picture taken nonstop. Stalkers <sighs> are scary, though. Just saying. They are. So, I don't know. Spring's got tons of them. Oh, totally. Do you? I haven't told her about them. I won't tell them where you are right <laughs> now. Trust me. <laughs> but see, I'm so paranoid, I will never reveal where I live. That's why I stopped saying exactly, like, too many details. Can we talk about Katrina's new music for a second? Absolutely. Sure, okay, so Katrina's got a new song, "Hold Me Down," yep. which I, is is one of my favorites that you've that you've ever recorded. Yes, I really dig it. <laughs> yes, I feel like yes, yes, it's yes. A, it's such a meeting of the mind, body, spirit connection to the song, and I know I'm getting too deep because it's like more of an upbeat jam, but but I like it. I it's like firing on all cylinders for me. So I know your fans are going to be very excited to welcome you back. Thank you. Um, tell us about. The new song, the new music, what you've been up to in the studio. So what you just said, the mind, body, soul thing, 
it's you hit it right on the head and that's why I just kept going back and writing and writing and there's so many songs that they're not bad songs but they didn't make the cut because to me I felt like I wanted I wanted that feeling of being able to convey what it's like to be in that kind of relationship mm -hmm. and and in a way that the listener can connect to that was still part of my spirit because I feel like that's such a big part of where I am right now and I can write songs that aren't about that and still have it be an expression of where also where I am but where I was and how I got here in the relationship that I'm in mm -hmm. but you know he's been so incred incredibly supportive and I don't really talk about you know wanting to take pictures or not wanting to take pictures it's just been my choice to not really publicize that so that side of my life and right. it's not because I want to hide it and every once in a while it ends up in my feed but that love and that support and that foundation that I get to go back to no matter if I had a good day, a bad day, or in between, or just something regular to the store, or if something crazy happened or something good happened. I mean, that's the stability in my life, that that love and that home and that safe place. Yeah. And I feel like I wanted to put that into a song. And I just, I'm so happy you feel that way about it. Yeah. Well, just know, knowing you like I do and, and knowing that you hustle, you know, to make, to you left a very lucrative career that you would have been successful Katrina was an entertainment lawyer before she decided to, you know, follow her dreams of, of becoming an, uh, you know, a, a professional musician. And um, I know how much you travel. I know how passionate you are about your music. And I feel listening to that song, like I know it's important for you to have a home base, to have support when you get home, to know that you can be gone for a week, two weeks at a time. You could be in the studio till four o'clock in the morning and the person that you go home to is not gonna give you, you know, read you the ride, act about it. But yeah. they're supportive of you. And that's what I think Hold Me Down represents. Cool. I, it, it's very much Katrina Wolverton. Cool. So let's take a listen to the song right now. Uh, it's katrinawolverton.com if you're interested. And um, the song is over on YouTube if you wanna yeah. get a look at our gorgeous girl. And Thank most you. importantly, yeah. do you operate as your own attorney? On the road. <laughs> you know what? I do not. I do review stuff, but I don't do my own personal negotiations. I actually did take on one client, and it's a radio syndication company, and it's been that. super fun, but it's it's really limited. So what's so cool is I get to use the hands-on experience I have, to, and this guy that I work with is super creative, and having one client, and I was actually working on a contract on, on the plane on the way over, <laughs> and it was really fun, but this is my world. And so being able to be fully immersed in this in every way is just, I'm so grateful for it. And I'm really happy you like the song. Well, here it is. Hold Me Down from Katrina Wolverton. Down, 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 oh.
All right, Katrina, that's awesome. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you for when uh, when you booked your gig in Philly. Did anyone tell you it was going to be the NFL draft? Uh, <gasps> no. Oh my gosh, do you have any idea what you are walking right. into? A little crowded. Okay. A little crowded. But I had a gig in Boston, and it was the day before the Boston Marathon. Oh my god! <laughs> but, but, Great but, landing. But, but oh, Mike, go to where the party is. So over, over by the Art Museum and the Ben Franklin Parkway is where all of the activity for the draft is. Right. But what she doesn't know is that very close to where where she's playing, which is by 30th Street Station, is the Penn Relays this weekend. So there Total is, madness. It's madness. Total madness. Well, I guess we'll find out when we drive into Philly. Get in and get out. Oh, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> We're just preparing for it to take forever to get there, but it's all good. So with the Penn Relays and the NFL, are you a sports person? You mentioned you, you follow hockey. I like sports. Yeah. I understand football. My friend and guitar player Andrew Doolittle is actually keeping us up to the minute on what's happening with the draft which is cool because he understands all aspects of it. Do you want him to do that? Yeah we do <laughs> actually. We love it. It's exciting. Oh, that it friend is exciting. Is like, I don't really understand anything about it until what is that movie Draft Day? What is it with Kevin Costner? Oh yeah Draft Day. It was so good. Yeah I'm so that in any given Sunday I'm, I'm all about the behind the scenes of it football. It was so good but I'm a, I am a huge hockey fan. I'm bummed that the Kings didn't make it but I we're following the well since before i flew out we were following what, ha what was happening with the playoffs that's awesome uh well katrina's opened up for everybody from like meatloaf that was and fun. you're on the road now with uh john mclaughlin john mclaughlin who um who's great we we got to see him uh, open up for parachute last year cool. in philadelphia he's a great guy too what are the live shows Sounding like these days, or I, I know I heard you mention that you're lacing one of your older songs, um, Shame on Me, with a bit of Lady Gaga's Million Reasons. So what are the live shows sounding like these days? So I like traveling acoustic. It's fun and it really challenges you in finding different ways to arrange the songs and also tells you if a song is good or not when you strip away all the production and you just have a guitar. Mm -hmm. And so we've been doing that, just me and a guitarist, and he does some background vocals and it feels good. It's fun. We're doing a bunch of music off of the new EP, and I'm doing one old song, Shame on Me, which is actually a mashup. So we start it with Lady Gaga's Million Reasons. We go straight into Shame on Me, and at the very end, we do a mashup of Gavin DeGraw's I Don't Want to Be because oh, it's actually awesome. the same exact chords as Shame on Me. And then I was supposed to open for um, Leon Russell. Oh, Ooh. gosh. He is. Ooh, and then he, he passed away yeah. yeah and it just broke my heart in so many ways and i didn't know quite how to um process that and it it's i still feel so emotional about it sometimes i'm at a loss for words and then yeah. i don't make sense i'm grammatically incorrect when i talk <laughs> about it but i've added that to my set too That's so i really do nice a song for you very cool it's really powerful it's been it's been fun i really love the set we're doing right now okay so okay when we all leave this earth yes. when we pass away not saying that we're all going to H-E double hockey sticks, but if we were. <laughs> is that a sports reference? That. What is what? what is the song that is playing in the ninth circle of hell for you? What is the one song, if you were banished, damned for all eternity, would be playing? What is the song? It can be a commercial. It can be a song by an artist. What is playing in the ninth circle of hell when you go? Is it awful? The first song that came to mind was Living on a Prayer from Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, I could see myself all the way it. there, and I just hear him in the back. Oh, we're halfway there. <laughs> maybe, we're not, maybe we're not dead and in hell, but we're tortured on a loop to one song. What's on oh, your, okay. What's see, on your... I'm imagining my journey there. What's, what's <laughs> what? the new song? What's, yeah, your... what, what's, like, on the way down? Well, maybe like, the Dante's journey is Inferno. Like, what is, the like... Maybe the journey's mocking her, and yeah. that's why it's that song. The Purgatory Playlist. <laughs> I like it. Yes, the Purgatory Playlist. Wonderwall. Oh, my gosh. No, 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 no. That not that one. one. Not that one. Not I will that. find it. Give me a second. It okay. haunts me I have everywhere. It. Not okay. Wonderwall, the song I'm going to do Okay. Do you have one, Mike? Mike's got it. Uh, it's an obscure song, so you can YouTube it if you want. Uh, f for some reason, the song that drives me nuts is... you got to go back to, I guess it's the 60s. In the Year 2525 by Zager and Evans. I know. I know it's, what you're it's talking a very about. obscure song. Yeah, it's 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 kind of oh, trippy. It's awful. I'll have to goggle it. Goggle will tell it, me. Put yeah, goggle the that. Goggle it is just it. awful. 
that song, if you would, you, you, you'll get three chords into it. You go, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that is bad. Is there one song, Katrina, you oh, just yeah. never oh, need yeah. to hear again for the oh, rest of your life? Oh, yeah. What is it? Well, it's a, it's a commercial. Okay. Because when you said it could be anything. Oh, my God, I wonder if it's the same one. It's I'll die. Because when I was a kid, and kids were notoriously mean, and I had this hair, except it was mm -hmm. not in control, and it was very not cool to have hair like this, and kids would go, the Regina steamer carpet cleaner. <laughs> and so if I never heard that again for the rest of my life, I think I would oh be very happy. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was not okay. excited to see that. Wow, that's, that's, really, that's really actually like a little deep and personal. <laughs> see if you recognize this one. I'll do my best. One, eight, seven, seven cars for kids. K A R S cars for kids. <laughs> One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. That's it. That's the one. What? I That's love it. that. But I know someone so who awesome. actually did donate their car to Cars for Kids, and they were the happiest person in the world. And then that changed my view of that song. No offense to the organization. <laughs> I'm sure they do fabulous work. Oh my gosh! And then the kid comes in. One eight seven seven cars for kids. I love it. I'll sing it along in oh my, my car. But it's so right catchy after. that you oh can God. sing it back. So the uh, mission accomplished. Now the mission accomplished. You're right. I've got another one. What? Mambo number five by Lou Bega. So I'm same. Same. No, no, I will play it forever and a day. I love Mambo number five. Try it. Just try it. Trust me, I have. <laughs> <laughs> but I did find my song. It's losing my religion from REM. Oh. That song haunts me. My husband everywhere. says the same thing. I know you said you were in like the grocery store. It does not like... matter. It's always playing, and I'm like, what is it about this song? It's gonna be the song I die to. I know it. I know it. Oh my gosh. Okay. And Mike's looking at me like, what in the world? <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Me dying from even, losing my religion. Even losing my religion, even the guys from R.E.M. said that that's, that's the most unlikely song of theirs that became a hit. I hate that song. And they, they say, um, um, shiny happy people. Michael Stipe of R.E.M. says his least favorite song to sing of theirs is shiny happy well, people. Well, maybe that's because he came up with the lyrics for that song by... Um, they all went into the recording studio and just wrote on the back of like Chinese um, the, the fortunes that the you get out cookies. of your fortune cookie. They all wrote like just a random sentence on the back of this, and that's how they compiled most of the lyrics for that album. They, they would have... just go over and pick pick out of a blind box and like, all right, we'll string these two together. Hey, well, it worked for them. I didn't know I that. Guess. That's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. Random. Fact of the day. All right, I have one, right. one last topic. What? This is a new segment we started last week. No, Talk what, to me. Oh, want to get asking, Chinese food. Asking Chinese for food? a friend. Yeah, that sounds good. I can uh, go for some right now. Okay. It's called asking, asking for, a for a friend. Okay. Have you ever accidentally gotten caught up in someone else's social media drama? Yes. I've been following it for eight months now. <laughs> have you accidentally? Eight months. And I don't mean, have you, have you like, been following it like have you accidentally gotten involved in drama on facebook that had literally nothing to do with you and you, you got you pulled into know, someone else's you facebook don't want to know account. personally you're just asking for a friend um yeah no. yeah no i'm asking for a friend okay for a friend <laughs> oh no but we're gonna pretend that i didn't say that i've been following these people for eight months on social media <laughs> <laughs> so does this mean actually that? interjecting yourself or just following it yeah like you got pulled into it and you don't know how your name gets pulled into something that has nothing to do with you well, I have two. So one is because of my social media, people think I'm other people. So sometimes they think I'm Katrina Kaif, who or, is a famous singer. Or Hurricane Katrina. Or the, well, that doesn't happen anymore, thank goodness. That's good. Or Katrina Pearson. Oh. Or Katrina and the Waves. So oh, that can bring on God. lots of love or lots of hate. So sometimes I just ignore it. Sometimes I say, hey, I think I'm confused with so-and-so. I sing songs and I have a recipe blog. <laughs> but when it comes to actually interjecting, I would not touch that with somebody else's 10-foot pole mm -hmm. because I just can't. I just can't. Mm -hmm. Well, there was a – there was – some sort of like online bullying happening oh. um, between like I loosely knew the yeah I'm gonna out myself I loosely knew the person that that was being talked about I had not seen the post but somebody that was involved in the thread messaged me privately and was like blah, 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 you got to tell so-and-so and blah, 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 and you know calm them down and this is for and we need to talk about this and I was like what are you like 
who are you? Like, I, I, I hadn't even seen the post, commented on the thread, nothing. And somebody that was mad about that post messaged me and said, you need to get your friends under control. So they like, wanted- I was literally guilty by association. So I was they- like, I don't know what you're talking about. They wanted you to put the bullier in check? Yes. Just because you knew the bullier, but you had nothing to do with anything else. I am like loosely, loosely. acquainted, if <laughs> that, with the people that were involved in the thread saying something not nice about this other person that I've met once. Hmm. And I was like, this was like 1130 last night. I'm here at the station trying to get stuff done. And I'm like, what? I don't understand why I'm invited. Like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And so that's why it got me thinking, like, have you ever gotten accidentally sucked into someone else's social media drama when you didn't mean to? Well, for me, it's just a random instance. So my name is Spring. Not a very common name. So for whatever reason, this man who I don't know tags me in a post. So I thought I was here in the studio and I'm like, oh, okay. I'm thinking maybe it's like a listener. No, this.